Hey guys, Will here again. I want to take a little look into NASA. Basically what uh, NASA says, what they tell us, and uh, my beliefs surrounding this. So, one question about the moon launch is the radiation belt. It's been, that's a uh, the Van Allen Belt, which is a radiation belt which surrounds the Earth. It's theorized that the Apollo the Apollo capsules could not have gone through it. Let's see what NASA says. Radiation. As we get further away from Earth, we'll pass through the Van Allen belts, an area of dangerous radiation. Radiation like this could harm the guidance systems, onboard computers, or other electronics on Orion. Naturally, we have to pass through this danger zone twice, once up and once back. But Orion has protection. Shielding will be put to the test as the vehicle cuts through the waves of radiation. Sensors aboard will record radiation levels for scientists to study. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. For this flight, it's time to head home. The upper stage of the rocket triggers separation. Orion's jets fire to turn it into the proper position to re-enter Earth's atmosphere. No matter what happens now, we're coming in. 75 miles above Earth, the spacecraft enters the atmosphere. Okay, guys, I let it play a little long, but did you see what he said? He said, before we send anybody through this area of space, we have to solve this problem. Wow, that's... Uh, I mean, he's an engineer. If he's not stating it correctly, why would they publish this? If that's incorrect, then why... Why would they have him say that? NASA, we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. So let's hear from their own words. English and in, in reading too much, but I've since grown out of that and I enjoy reading now. And I played a lot of sports. So, and all of that happened in a little town called York, Maine, across the United States from where we're talking to you right now. Hello, my name is Steve Owen. I'm a teacher here at Riverside Prep. I'd like to ask you about the stress associated. Okay, now it's worth mentioning they do not back down on what he just said yeah Maine was across the country from where they're filming this huh if they had said something incorrect wouldn't it be very easy just to say well you know we're above space across the country from that right now let me show you why I think this is more of the truth. Truth in media. This was unintentional, of course. And uh, here we go. Let me show you right here. This is Ascension. I made a quick little truth in media about Ascension. And if you see here, there is a very, very large motif of 51 in this movie and if you know anything about this uh, it's not a movie this mini series if you know anything about ascension it's all about a faked space program kennedy was a fan nixon saved the ship but then confessed and it all has to do with 51 51 51 they talk about it so much in this show so personally, I think it's filmed over at Area 51. That would explain the Janet aircraft. 
the jetted aircraft that they don't let anyone know who's going in. It flies out mysteriously to Area 51, blacked out windows. What else would it be for? Sure, other black ops, but is it not logical or sensible that it very well could be a fake space program? Of course you don't believe that if you don't think NASA could fake anything. So this guy right here really screwed stuff up. He really screwed stuff up. NASA even put it out. But now, let's listen to the man. Let's listen to Neil Armstrong. Um, at first, this is going to be a... Uh, it seems to sound like Coast to Coast with George Norrie. Uh, they're talking about Neil Armstrong, but uh, I'm going to let this play in entirety. Enjoy. For years, for years, Neil Armstrong refused to be interviewed. I found that to be one of the strangest things of anything. You would think that the first man on the moon, the national hero that he is, would have talked to everyone about the experience, about the wonder. Yeah, that didn't his happen. His role model was Lindbergh. And Lindbergh became a very public person and was very much out there with his political views and all that. You'd think that, that uh, Neil would have at least wanted to be a role model for the next generation. Instead, he became essentially a recluse, a hermit. And on every anniversary, they would wind him up and trot him out in public. The most interesting one was during the Clinton years at the White House on the 25th anniversary, where do you remember what Armstrong said, the most stunning thing that an astronaut could say, and I think in this milieu get away with it? Give us the quote. Well, he, he said two things. At the start of his speech, he compared himself and the other astronauts to birds, to parrots. And he then made a joke, and he said, and parrots don't fly very well. Well, what else do parrots do, George? <laughs> they repeat what, what they're they told. told. Plant his foot on the surface of the moon has been a pioneer in many ways. And Mr. Armstrong, in asking you to come to the podium, may I say that millions of Americans have admired you not only for your achievement, but for the quiet dignity with which you have conducted yourself and represented not only our country, but humankind. So did you hear that? That's a little suspect to me. He says, what we really respect you for is your quiet dignity. Maybe they mean, this is the type of doublespeak that they do, your quiet and your dignity in not letting the lie or the hoax be known. It is known that these Apollo 11 astronauts would not swear on a Bible, and they were Christians. They would not swear on a Bible that they went to the moon. So let's continue. Ladies and gentlemen, Neil Armstrong. Thank you, Mr. Vice President, Mr. President, members of Congress, fellow astronauts, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Wilbur Wright once noted that the only bird that could talk was the parrot, and he didn't fly very well. <laughs> So I'll, I'll be brief. <laughs> this 
This week, uh, America has been recalling the Apollo program and reliving uh, the memories of those times in which so many of us here, colleagues here in the first rows, were immersed. Our old astrogeology mentor, Gene Shoemaker, even called in one of his comments to mark the occasion with spectacular Jovian fireworks. And reminding us once again of the power and consequence of celestial extracurricular activities. Many Americans were part of Apollo, about one or two in each thousand citizens all across the country. They were asked by their country to do the impossible, to envisage, to design, and to build a method of breaking the bonds of Earth's gravity, and then sally forth and visit another heavenly body. The principal elements. You know, I never, I never noticed this before, but he was talking about breaking the bonds of Earth's gravity. If Earth's gravity is a falsity and it's really weight and density and the relationship thereof, then would we not be breaking the bonds of this intellectual slavery against us? Continuing. Leaving Earth, navigating in space, and descending to a planet unencumbered with runways and traffic controls would include the major requirements necessary for a spacefaring people. Today, a space shuttle flies overhead with an international crew. A number of countries have international space programs. During the space age, we have increased the knowledge of our universe a thousandfold. Today we have with us uh, a group of students among America's best. To you, we say, we've only completed a beginning. We leave you much that is undone. There are great ideas undiscovered. Guys, I just wanted to say I'm done with the video. Uh, we got about another minute of uh, Armstrong going to finish off the speech, but uh, that's pretty much all I have to say. Judge for yourself. I'm going to have this play out. I uh, appreciate y'all watching, and please go ahead and like and comment if you think this was interesting. Let me know what you think. Uh, what are some things that I missed or some things that I'm wrong about? Breakthroughs available to those who can remove one of truth's protective layers. There are places to go beyond belief. Those challenges are yours. In many fields, not the least of which is space, because there lies human destiny. idealistic faces riveted on the first man on the moon talking to them and he looked at them and he said there are wonders beyond belief there are truths to be revealed if one can remove truths protective layers now where in the world does one get the idea the truth has to have protection to be found out